Good morning to you this morning on this fine day that the Lord has made for us. My name is Victor Kyle, and we have Deacons Margaret and Laura Wells with us today at the church as we record this for you. Now, I'm going to give you a message today, and some of the information it's going to be because we're so happy, so long we've waited to have to open the church this coming weekend. But we have to put some things in place so we don't uh, put people at risk for sharing the, you know, the, uh, the virus that's going on. All right, so let me give you a bunch of them. You can see they have a, a list here of things we're doing. These things are temporary until, until the, you know, we're, we're safe from the coronavirus and we'll go back to the way it used to be, primarily. Okay, first, know that the pews and the door handles and the other contact surfaces in the room have been sanitized and will be sanitized after each service, even between the services on Sunday morning. Our service times won't be changed. They're 6 o'clock on Saturday night, 11.30, or I'm sorry, 8.30 and 11 on Sunday. Now, we're asking that the at-risk people don't come to these, these services yet, okay, because uh, we're trying to follow along with what the government wants us to do. They'll allow us to open, but open with some restrictions. And so if you're at risk or you're over the age of 65, we ask that you just watch the... Uh, what we're going to record for Saturday night and use that as your Sunday service, okay? Um, now, during the service, when you show up, you'll come into the parking lot and park. Try not to congregate in the parking lot together. Keep your social distance like we've been taught to do. When you come to the front door, somebody will meet you at the front door of the sanctuary of the church, not on the inside door, but the door of the welcome center. All the other doors on campus will be closed and nobody will have access to the campus. Okay, so we'll come in that door, we'll have our church services, and we'll leave by the same door. So I recommend that you park in this parking lot on the uh, Hayden's Road side. Okay? Okay, so now when you first come in, you'll be met at the door. You'll then be brought into the church. We have gloves and, and sanitizing um, hand wash, you know, the hand sanitizers over in the, in the narthex or in the welcome center. That is also where we will collect our offerings. Okay, so we will not have any, we're trying to get no, a no contact service is what we're trying to do. So that will be in the welcome center. We will, we, you will be ushered to a seat and in the pews all the hymnals and Bibles are pushed to the one side so that we don't want to touch those. We'll be using the screens or the screen for all the services, even the traditional service, temporarily. All right, so we leave the leave the hymnals alone. Everything will be on the screen. You'll be ushered to a seat so that there's proper distancing between everybody. Okay, and um, families can sit together, but we don't want to put a whole bunch of families sitting next to each other in the same pew. So we're going to have ushers taking you to the spots. During communion, okay, again, we don't want to have any contact. Pastor and I will have a face mask and gloves on during that. Okay, we will take the host or the bread, and the bread will open your hands, and we'll, we will just slightly drop it. We're not going to touch your hands. We're going to drop it into your open hands. So we're not going to give it into your mouth or anything like that. Um, we will have available then the individual cups. And actually, we will have the common cup. There are some people that are going to do the common cup. Uh, we've already asked some people, and they're not worried about the risk. But uh, if you are, obviously, the common, the individual cups. Uh, communion will be continuous. We will not sit at the rail in the traditional service. And during, uh, as we as we come forward for the uh, continuous communion, the ushers will have you space every other pew as you line up to come up. So you don't want to leave a pew in between as you're standing on to the side. Uh, you will also be um, ushered out after the service. Let's see if I've missed anything. I don't think I have. And with that, I would like to start our service today. We'll start in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading for today comes from Acts 6, 1 to 9, chapter 7, 2a, and verses 51 to 60. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people when some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of the Cilia and Asia, those from Cilia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your father did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And when they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he crawled out with a, called out, cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. take Acts 6 verse 3 and concentrate on that. Um, it's, I call this caring for others. And here's what Acts 3 is. Uh, 6 verse 3. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. 
In a reading for today, a problem obviously arose in the early church. The problem was the church was growing, and not everybody was getting the help that, from the other Christians in the church, in, in the community that they needed. Specifically, it was the widows. Um, now, it's very important, this is a very important topic, because if we go back to what, the, what God gave the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, he didn't just give them the Ten Commandments, he also gave them a, a lot of laws, okay? And here's one of them, let me share it with you. Kind of scary, a little bit. You should not mistrust any, or I'm sorry, mistreat any widow or fatherless child if you mistreat them and they cry to me. I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. Sounds pretty much like God is uh, pretty serious about us taking care of, of, the, of the widows and, and the orphans in our, in our midst, that uh, they don't have a, a father there to be with them, that, you know, so he's saying, look, that's your responsibility yours. Uh, he, he makes it uh, uh, for sure by saying, if you don't like it, I'll make you and your, your family into widows and fathers. Now, the, the 12 disciples knew this. Okay? He knew, they, they knew this Bible verse. They knew, they knew what God had told them to do. So they, were, they knew that they were called as Christians to take care of the, you know, the widows and the, and the children, and really everybody that were Christians in the community. So, uh, but they wanted to concentrate, and things, the church was just big. They wanted to concentrate on God's word and prayer. So what they did was they said, okay, we'll, we'll get seven, seven guys together that are, 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 are good Christian men. Okay? And here's the, here, here's the names. It actually gives us the names. Stephen, Philip, Prochorus, Nic Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas. They were devoted men to help uh, the other Christians in the community there. And they, uh, even today, we, we were called, God calls other people in the church to help people in, in the church. And now, in our church here at Grace, we have, also have a group of ministers that are lay ministers. Now, let me explain a lay minister. A lay minister is a person who is not called to preach, okay, or, or to holy, administer the sacraments in a public way and not ordained. So they're lay ministers. Now, we, we call them Stephen ministers, after Stephen, the first name of, the minute, of one of the seven men I just, just mentioned. And in, in our church, the Stephen minister could be a man or a woman. They are trained as Stephen ministers. And then they would be alongside a person going through troubles in their lives. An example might be, I've lost my job. It's really tearing me up, you know, I'm having trouble, or I lost a loved one and I'm grieving. I may have contracted a disease that's incurable, what we have, you know, the virus going on. So a person, a Stephen minister with them, would come alongside one of these people one on one, a man on, with a man or a woman with a woman, a woman in our church, and be with them through this troubled time in their life. So it's a way of caring for something in the community very similar to what was being done in the Old Testament and also here in our text for today. All right, so, we have to understand, though, that this caring for our community and these other people, these love and things of love that we do, comes from the love Jesus gave us when he died on the cross. What kind of love was that? He gave his life for us for the forgiveness of sins so that we could go to heaven. What a saving thing, what a, what a bunch of blessings. For that love, we, we share that love with others. Now, the sharing of that love with others by us is not get us to heaven. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. But he does command us. It is a fulfillment of the, of the Ten Commandments. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbors as yourselves. It's right there. Okay? That is the fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. And we get trouble with it for sure. But that, that is where we're going here. Okay, so today, our message is, yes, we want to help our community in the church. We want to help people outside of the church with Jesus' love. And 
Also, we want to understand that his love is why we share the love. So let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, we pray for those who are in the hospital, specifically Lucy Clark and Penny Lager. Be with them as they receive their medical treatment. Extend your healing hand to them. You showed perfect kindness to children, to those who needed your help, anyone you met. You showed your love for us by dying on the cross for our sins. Help us to share that gift of love with others. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. For you answer me. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. At this time, as is our custom, we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.